Hello. I know that you think that this is a joke because it's the first of April, but it's not a joke. <laughs> it's my first uh, broadcast. I never did something like that before, but I think uh, it's kind of interesting to share with you what we are going to, to show in uh, two weeks in Milan for the Milan Design Week. And uh, yeah, it's a, you know better than me that um, to be a designer and to do something and to show during the Milan Design Week is always a big effort. So this is something like a preview just to make you think uh, that uh, the work of to be a designer is kind of tough. <laughs> And there are a lot of work behind it, each product. So um, here I have like some document and some picture of uh, behind the scenes. And uh, we are in my studio in Stockholm. So it's a kind of behind the scenes because you can see where we are working. And um, I feel a little bit anchor man right now. That maybe is funny. But let's try and let's see if uh, this would be something not only for one time, but maybe we we'll continue also in the future. So, what is going on in Milan? Milan, this year we are going to present a few new projects. Uh, some of them is for our usual client and partner, other is for new companies. And um, what, the first one that I want to talk to you is a project that we developed for Arflex. Arflex is uh, one of the most famous uh, Italian brands specializing in upholstery products. Uh, let's say that they was probably one of the founder of the famous Italian design. And um, we designed two products for them this year. One is called um, Algon, and is a family of uh, club chair, let's say. It's kind of hybrid. And the second is called Capilano, that is like uh, the famous bridge. is a family of side tables. That is not only a side table, by the way, is also a kind of, uh, let's say, um, cabinet or container, something that you can use in different places of your home. So, let's, uh, talking about Algon, Algon was like, um, um, is a, um, this you can see is a kind of uh, family that was during our last visit in Arflex. And uh, the idea of Igo, the original idea was to have like, you can see here, is a club chair with high back and you can have two different supports, two different feet. And, um, and the idea, the main idea was to do something very compact, very easy to adjust in different places. And uh, we decided to use, like, uh, to work with the, the stitching, the stitching and, and a kind of soft pattern that is typical of the history in our flex production. And we play with that and we do two different kind of back. So you have the simple one and one with a lot of stitching. And uh, the, the interesting thing of this product is that it can work residentially, but can work also in the contract market. And the funny part of that is that it's born after our sofa that we designed last year that is called Papoose. So in the beginning, the back was with this like big ear, like but in the end, we decided to change. And then there are Capilano. Capilano is, uh, what I was telling you before, is a kind of table, is a kind of bridge that can work like 
side table, but can become also kind of small bookshelf or element that can play around the sofa, or to create exactly like a bridge. But in the end, it's, it's almost a system. It's a system with different shape and different size that you can play all around the um, your home or whatever. I think would personally, I'd love to have in my flat. It's just a suggestion for you. <laughs> then, after uh, our flex, we design for uh, Casamania. Casamania is a brand that was another Italian brand, much younger than uh, Arflex. And let's say that is uh, we born professionally almost together. Uh, Casamania was one of my first clients and was probably the one of the first company to believe in, in me when uh, I was in the beginning of my career. So this year we design uh, uh, this funny story about the new product. We designed something that uh, came out from an old concept that we developed for a, a cafe. A cafe means uh, an interior project. An interior project that we developed in uh, 2004. And this project never become reality. <laughs> uh, never because, I don't know, some political problem. But the main, the main idea was to create a system and uh, done with different uh, element modules that you can combine together. And the first step was to create a kind of lounge sofa that was called Bangrim, like the characters on, on the Marvel comics that is a man with a lot of pieces of stone and these pieces of stone is matching perfectly to create a body so the idea was almost like that modules with different shapes that can create a kind of body of a seat and from that concept we develop this this is called Lofoten Lofoten is archipelago a famous archipelago in Norway. And we call Lofoten because it's exactly like different island that can work and live together. The different, uh, um, the different element that create this archipelago or peninsula in this case is done by element that is a table, is a seat, is a screen, acoustic screen, is a small bookshelf, it's a container for flowers. And all of these elements can work together and can create different configuration that can support different, different use. This is the abaco, let's say the, all the notes that compound the music. And here you have the configuration of uh, one of the configuration, one suggestion of what you can do. But this is my first sketch that you can see it's pretty clear what was the idea. Then just want to share with you was this part that I really like. Maybe you don't see very well, but here the stitching, the pattern on the screen and the square. So just to tell you I'm very picky and I really like to create very well all the details that is going on in one of the products that we are developing like studio. Another project uh, is um, a chair that is called Phoenix. Phoenix like the bird or the mythological bird, not the city in uh, in US. And this chair is, um, is done for another partner, another client that uh, is my first, uh, my first client in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden. 
and uh, maybe probably you know that I have two studios, one in Venice and one in Stockholm. Now we are in Stockholm. And uh, Offic was one of the first companies in Scandinavia to believe and to invest in our studios. So we have a very special connection with them. The name of this chair is Phoenix for two, probably one reason, not two reasons. Uh, is Phoenix like the mythological bird that in a way was burned and, and after it's reborn uh, forever, right? It's like a, uh, a circle, a circle. And this is a kind of, um, let's say, a new policy in the effect uh, way to think about product is the moment that you have a you break or you destroy something, you can send back this component to the company and the company replace with a new one. But the policy is that you need to send back to them this piece. And they will repair that and they will put in the circle. So in a way, a product is a, uh, will have a never-ending life. And I really like that because it's a kind of taking care of our planet in a different way. Phoenix is done uh, by a cast aluminum structure and is recyclable aluminum, by the way. And it's symmetrical structure, so it's divided here. And the mood that creates this part is the same mode that creates this part. And then what I really like of this project is that with few components, you can, and the few components, the, like the skeleton of this chair, create also the, uh, the idea of, and the aesthetics of the chair. So the chair is like that. So you have these two eye, and you have the seat and the back in a, a posture with many different kind of textile that, almost all of this color, whatever. And then you have the structure that is in aluminum, these parts. And then you have the legs that is extruded aluminum. Here is an, another details how is done the connection with the back. And that's it for Phoenix. I hope that you will enjoy the comfort of this chair that is amazing, by the way. Another project is, um, an, this is a new client, is Etimo, is an Italian brand based close to Rome in Viterbo, to be precise. Uh, a beautiful place, and the food is amazing there. And um, and this company is uh, my first client that is doing only outdoor pieces. So it's specialized in outdoor furniture. And uh, for them, I design a collection, an entire collection that is called um, Ezedra. Ezedra because it's like uh, the Roman, uh, the, how, I, I don't know in English, but maybe the word goes in Italian is amphitheater, so it's half a theater, so it's a semicircle, like arena. And uh, the shape is like that. So it's uh, a kind of big C in, um, in a, a, let's say, synthetic fiber. And then you have a structure in aluminum with this stick in, in wood that create the platform. Then you connect the back and then you have the, the cushion. So all of these three elements, when you put together, they create like the, the aesthetic of the product. And it's not that I designed this just for fun. I designed a C, I can sketch you why because the different C you can put in this way so you can stack in that way and then the platform the aluminium structure you can put in that way 
so you can stack one like that. And then when you ship these products, you ship with probably the 80% less of the normal volume when you need to ship kind of normal sofas. That will help, of course, the company to delivery with less cost the, the product all around the world, but also, uh, in a way, is what I was telling you and connecting with the uh, Ofec product with Phoenix. It's a kind, to, kind of way to respect the, our environment. And then you can see his entire collection. So there are the three seat sofa, there are the dining chair, there are the high back sofa, high back one seat, the elliptical table. Ah, oh, yeah, there are also the table. The table also is very interesting. It's, it's working with the same aesthetic of, um, of the, the chair, of the seat. But you can see some of my sketches here. But the top is done not only with uh, the classical tech wood, normally using the outdoor furniture, but also with this material that is called laminum, that is a laminate porcelain, normally used in a, for like tiles or to, to create surface. And this material is very durable and uh, work very well in an outdoor environment. Then, probably the most fun product that we present in Milan, fun not because I don't have fun with the others, but fun because it's a kind of uh, totally kind of freedom to do this project. Um, this project is called Vetroidi and is done for Vereum. Vereum is a Czech Republic company specializing in uh, mirroring glass. And last year we designed a side table called uh, Bonbon because the shape of that side table, maybe some of you remember that, is like, it's like a candy. And uh, we did that project because uh, I was to be to be honest, probably because I'm from Murano and this famous island, the production of glass. Uh, for me to think something with a mirroring a mirror glass was very difficult, and I was thinking what could be something with, done with mirror glass. So it came out my mind memories when I was kid, and it was you know in the in the candy the paper was a mirroring paper and uh, transparent but mirroring inside so that helped me to came out with the idea of the bonbon tape but this year was even more difficult because what could be a new product for them so i started thinking what uh, was the the tradition of a glass factory what normally they have in their catalog and came out the idea that all, especially in the 50s and the 60s, in Murano, there was all the company have a collection of animals, like reinterpretation of decorative objects um, um, done in, in glass. Um, but with, of course, more still like more abstract, but you still remember it was like animals. What kind of animals could be for Vereum? So the mirror glass gave me immediately a perception of uh, something that comes from the future. And uh, so the, you can see it. So you can have this like globe with the, the silver inside. And so I was thinking, OK, let's think about a kind of uh, animal that came from another planet. And so we start to design like small character that is like globe with small legs without function, just decorative function. 
And the decorative function give us also a gift to me, the idea that this, the glass production is not something that is done, you can do, of course, you can produce also with mold, but normally you touch also with your hands. Touching with your hands each piece is different from the other one that you produced maybe before. So each of these small characters have his own personality because the shape is a little bit different from the other one. And I really like that because you can really express that the glass is a special material that in the same time when you really want to have a product like that, you are absolutely sure that no one in the world will have a product exactly what you have, what you buy. So we create first version that is totally without function and another version that has small antenna that is two flowers or um, um, like one antenna but is like a candle holder or a rocket depends and and then you can combine also flowers with a small tea light and that is I call the romantic Metroid because probably it's the one that you put in the middle of your table when you have a romantic dinner or lunch. Then um, another project that I'm very proud of is for Fornazari. Fornazari is a very a very old Italian company based in an area close to Udine, very famous in uh, the past for the production of wood chair and um, Wolfgang is the name of this collection. The first chair that I designed of this collection was in 2011. I was the first product that I developed in my own studio. No, it was not my own studio, sorry. It was a studio that was called Wolfgang. So I decided to call this chair Wolfgang in honor of the people that, in a way, were so kind to offered to me an opportunity to be seat in their studio. And um, so here is the original sketches. You can see there are different kind of direction. In the end, we try to combine the two classical wood chair aesthetics, the Tone one with the Wagner one. I know that is very ambitious, but I'm ambitious sometimes. And uh, so we develop a family that right now in Milan, we, we show a preview in Stockholm, but in Milan would be much more, um, much more visible and much more clear and would be like um, a metal version with a metal frame. Then there would be um, a version with uh, the stool, the table, and then there will be the high back lounge, the ottoman, and then if you want, you can pass by and you can see <laughs> the rest because it's a lot of product. Then, from a bigger scale to a smaller scale, uh, three good friends of mine, Clayson Coivista Luna, um, they are not only good friends, they are very good architect and designer. As they create a new business, a new model. And they, based on that model, they decide to create their uh, own company that is called Smaller Object. Smaller Object works where uh, the designer, in a way, will take care of the production of the product and they will be like a hub to distribute and to sell your products. So for, for to be sustainable and to be something interesting, uh, to, to be able, especially in the beginning, to, you know, maybe uh, to be easy to, to find, to distribute and so on, the idea was to create smaller objects. And um, one of them, Ero Coivisto, asked me, uh, probably from my origin, 
to design an espresso coffee cup. And I decided to design uh, something very simple and very basic, let's say timeless piece. And they, you can see here in the beginning, there was like some sketches with also another part that in reality there are not anymore. And this probably was a little bit too much postmodernist style. And here there was other sketches with uh, other kind of support. And then there was also kind of other shape with big here. I don't know, probably because I become father like a month ago and my little one have a big here. And uh, I decided to create a handle that is a big here. And the big here is like a kind of prothesis, kind of something that came out from the body of, of the, the cup and help you to take the cup in the proper way. So with this gesture and uh, with your finger like that, <laughs> and you can drink. That is a really a minimal touch on the material and super um, easy to the, the, the touch and this, the grip is very good. So you have something that is a little bit stackable, easy to clean, uh, very resistant because you don't have a hole, nothing. So it's kind of much less the opportunity to break that. And, uh, and we call a little bit here, probably because it's a little bit here. <laughs> Then, the last project, but not, uh, not the less important, probably is one of the most important, is a sofa that we designed for N Tradition. N Tradition is a Danish brand. Uh, it's my first Danish client, by the way. And I never worked in Denmark before, and I was always asked to myself why because I really like the Danish design. So I have the opportunity and the pleasure to, to join the team of uh, and tradition. Uh, what I really like of them is that they are trying to combine the old master they, they are selling and because they own the, the rights of designer like uh, Pantom or Jakobsen. And uh, so, Plus, they are they invite very good contemporary designer like uh, um, Jaime Ayon, that is a good friend of mine, and um, Benjamin Hubert and Williamson, Lex Pot, and many others. And uh, so they asked me to design a sofa. And last year we present Cloud. Cloud is, uh, was done in two seat and three seat. And Cloud is done with uh, combine of uh, the tradition of Italian sofa and the Scandinavian way to do sofas and upholstery. So, in the Scandinavian way, the upholstery is very, let's say, it's not super soft, but it's very clean, very sculptural in a way. In the Italian tradition, the upholstery product is very soft, very comfy, very, let's say, cozy. So, my idea was to do something to combine these two cultures and to create like a support done in the classical Scandinavian way and then add this with super soft cushion that creates the aesthetics of the sofa. Doing that, we decide this year to relaunch the cloud sofa with new proportion and new finishes. 
So we did last year the three seater was with three cushions. This year we decided to do this version with two big cushions, changing the opportunity of the cover. Means you can use textile of very important brand like Rubelli or of steel quadrat and so on. And we work a lot in the finishes of the metal. So now it's available also the bronze and other stuff. And we are working also with the leather version and with many other declination of this family that I cannot tell you now, but will be a surprise for next year, I'm sure. So this is what uh, we are going to present in Milan. And uh, you can see it's a lot of uh, work, a lot of uh, good adventure, and what I'm, I always like to say is something that uh, for me, what I really like to be a, a designer and to do this work is the opportunity to meet people and to create very interesting story and uh, exchange and share knowledge uh, is a kind of a circle that become bigger and bigger and bigger. So that is what really ch challenged me in trying to work in internationally in different kind of culture. And probably is the reason why I'm doing a broadcast to explain to you what we are doing in my studio. And um, what else? Milan is Milan, of course, is the most important, um, probably the most important uh, design week in the world. But of course, it's not the only one. There are also other design week that will come before and later. And after Milan, we will be in Toronto with an event where we will launch new products for De La Espada and a new collaboration with Mjolk, a small shop gallery based in a, in a beautiful place in Junction in Toronto. Then um, something very interesting and amazing is the work that we are doing in China, where we involve other friends, colleagues like uh, Richard Hutton, Noé Dusha Fullerans, Costanz Kise, Sebastian Herkner, Kleison Kovistorune, Note Design Studio, and uh, Philippe Maluan, and um, I probably I forgot someone, please don't be so mad with me, but. Um, uh, I promise you, I remember everyone next time. But anyway, it's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting adventure there because I'm art directing or I'm the creative director of a new uh, Chinese brand that is called Zhao Zuo. And uh, they are focused in a Chinese market, only in Chinese market right now. And but um, we are involving designers from all around the world and the product will be developed in china for chinese people and the interesting thing is not for the rich chinese people but with this product will be for the new chinese middle class so exactly what was happening in um, europe 50 years ago and they are using an interesting channel they are selling online um, but now we are also going to open the first showroom in June for them in uh, Beijing. And then another project that is a kind of top secret, but uh, will be also in China, uh, will be launched in, uh, in June. And it's top secret because, um, because it, it's too important now to tell you what will be. I hope maybe we have another broadcast and I will explain you exactly what kind of project we, we will launch there. And then of course we will start again with uh, Paris and London in September where our, we are planning other events there with new launches especially for uh, De La Espada.
and that's all. And um, what about Milan? Where are you going to do in Milan? Uh, Milan, uh, yes, true. Milan, what I'm going to do in Milan? Uh, first three days, probably I would be running like crazy in the fair uh, to meet uh, my client and probably to meet some of you or some journalists there. I know that there are a lot of things is going to happen. I know that there are a very interesting event that Nike is launching in Milan where some of my friend is involved. I'm, um, I'm very curious to see the Triennale uh, with the new uh, program, with the new um, exhibition that will be there. And uh, for sure, I will go to, to give, a look, give a look at uh, Lambrate. And um, I would probably also go to see what the wallpaper handmade project will done this year. But there are so many things in Milan, you know, in the end, I'm always planning to do something, but the best is to arrive in Milan, to listening what people are telling you, what is nice or not, and just going with the flow. And, um, Oh, by the way, for sure, I will go to visit my friend Nando with his installation where he designed 50 chair done, inspired by Japanese manga. And uh, then I need to be much more, uh, to, yeah, to read more, uh, some guides or to give a look to the invitation that we receive. But... Uh, my first goal in Milan is just to have opportunity to meet friends and to share uh, how was the year before Milan and just to have more information on what is going on all around the world. And for sure I will go also to have some nice dinner. <laughs> and um, one of these probably would be in um, in Via di Fiori Chiari, one of my favorite restaurants. Write it down and show it to people so they can... Ah, yes. is um, uh, Via di Fiori Chiari. Um, trattoria... Toscana. Toscana means from Tuscany. Torre di Pisa. And the best dish is the, let's say, tagliata, but uh, how is it in, uh, in English? It's beef. It's, yeah, it's not important that I write that. Uh, it's Italian. So anyway, Via dei Fiori Chiari, and the name of the place is Trattoria Toscana Torre di Pisa. I don't remember if it's Trattoria or Steria, but anyway, you can try both in Google and you will find that. And, um, and it's something very, very cool. Um, and, um, ah, yeah, uh, I'm just receiving. <laughs> it is like the asking kid. Though. Yeah, uh, for sure I will go to visit Arcade Brothers event. And otherwise someone will kill me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and, uh, no, I will go also. I'm curious because in the beginning I was talking a lot with them about this event that will be um, close to Super Studio, so I'm uh, plus there are also the friends of Psyduck with their uh, event there. So uh, I'm I'm going f I'm going there also for sure to 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 give a look and see what they was able to do. And uh, then of course I don't know if this year because I'm getting older, 
I can be in Barbasso every night, but for sure some night I will be there to, to have a toast with some friends. And um, that's it. I'm looking forward to, yeah, to see the work that we develop in one year to be present there and to see the reaction and the feeling to hoping that the fair and the situation in Europe will be better. Let's see. And uh, but I'm feel that the optimist is moving in a good way. And um, yeah, one thing that I'm really looking forward to is a, a show in the Triennale that is uh, a friend of my Beppe Finesi did. Great, sorry. And um, and there are other friends like Fabio Novembre that uh, participate on that. I saw today or yesterday a preview of uh, the work of Fabio that looks very interesting and is always very inspiring in a way. So um, I really want to, to see what he developed in reality. And um, that's it. Um, I don't know if you send me some question, I will be here to reply to you. And uh, just for a while. Yeah, and in the meantime, maybe you can tell everybody about our new uh, social media. Ah, channels. yes, yes, it's true. Uh, because we are getting older, and uh, the in the world uh, right now for to communicate is very important to have um, uh, a very good strategy and a very good connection with a good network we develop not only a personal social media but also uh, a studio social media so we make a new uh, website a new uh, we rebrand completely our uh, image thanks to SM Associati uh, graphic design studio based in Milan <clears throat> and uh, thanks to that uh, we decided also to uh, upgrade our social life <laughs> and uh, we create uh, a new profile uh, in um, in um, in uh, Instagram, that is Niketo Studio, a new one in uh, Twitter, that is also Niketo Studio, and a new one also in uh, Facebook, that is Niketo Studio. Don't forget Snapchat and Periscope. Ah, yes, it's true. Uh, ah, by the way, I saw now, where is uh, this? Is with one seat. <laughs> It's like that. It's Niketo with only one seat. But no, it's because it's just a smile. And uh, ah, and there are someone that is telling me that um, is upside. Let's see if like that yeah. work better. Come on, guys. It's our first broadcast. Some, something doesn't work. But it's, it's like that. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm sure that is right now. And um, then, um, yeah, we will be in a, um, in a, most of the time. All of our product will be shown in a, in the um, in the salone in the fair, and so I'll probably we cross. Uh, with some of you in the corridor of the fair, and um, and then uh, probably I will. Uh, ah, yes, another thing that I want to absolutely going to visit is the. I hear that Hay is going to be in uh, Pelota, in Brera, and I'm very curious to, to see what will be there. So. Uh, Rolf and Matt, for sure, they did a good job. So I, I really want also to go to, to see what he is doing. And um, 
Plus, there are so many news. Patricia Okiola are directing Casino, so I'm curious to see what she did. Uh, and what is the next step in Casino? Um, Cartel, yeah, the, the, the famous name uh, of the Italian design industry. So, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, there are other questions. Do you want to know more? What should, we, what should we expect from the studio in Milan? Will you, avail, will you be available for journalists to take interviews? Will you... Ah, yes. Um, uh, of course, the schedule starts to be a little bit busy because we still... We have we received a lot of uh, requests, but uh, if you want, and uh, I'm always trying to be available for for the journalist uh, to explain face to face and in person what is in the my my idea and my work. So if you are interesting, just write to us an email and for sure we can find the time to talk with you. Let's check if we have any more questions. Yes. Places for shopping in Milan, can you recommend any? Oh, wow. Uh, what kind of shopping? There are many different. Um, of course, there are Via Monte Napoleone, but uh, it's not my target. <laughs> but if you, if you have, uh, if you want some luxury, I think it's a good place to go. And uh, but to be honest, I'm not so expert in the shopping in Milan because I never did shopping in Milan. Or oh, maybe yes. Normally, when I forgot some T-shirt or something like that, I'm going to Orcos or H&M <laughs> to buy something just for the week. So that is my shopping in Milan. Um, so. I don't have uh, many other place to suggest you. Ah, yes, maybe if you like books, I really recommend you to pass by the bookstore in Triennale that I always like to be there and to buy some stuff. Mm, let's see if there's anything else. Ah, will you be doing another live stream during the fair? Talking about what the what happened during the uh, the week, maybe it could be interesting. Maybe I can do a a broadcast uh, from the fair. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yes. If you are interesting, I, I will do. Ah, then yeah, of course. Uh, yesterday, uh, I, I was shocked uh, to hear that uh, Zaha did pass it away, and uh, just want to say my uh, condolence about that, and especially because it's a big loss in uh, in the creative community, and uh, considering not only the work of Zaha did, but especially. To be a woman in a world of 99% of men, uh, I think she did something amazing and something that was very inspiring for a lot of people and especially for a lot of young women. So, uh, for sure the work and what she did uh, will remain for a long time or probably forever. So. Sadly, uh, this is life, and, uh, but she was great. We have one last question. Yeah. Um, which places can you recommend in Stockholm? Oh, in Stockholm, uh, places to means restaurant or... Okay, if you really like Swedish food, uh, a really nice place is uh, Pelican. The meatballs is amazing there. 
and um, another um, there are another uh, nice place that I really like also for food is uh, I know that it sounds not so fancy but uh, there are a, a restaurant specializing in German food that is called Bar Central and is in a neat Orient. and they have amazing selection also about wine and beer and it's a very nice place then uh, I can continue for three hours because I Stockholm is a very high standard in terms of restaurant and stuff like that. Then there are, of course, other places that I really like sometimes to be just to walk around, like in Soderman, and especially discovering all the time some new small antique shop. And uh, but also the area where we are busy with the studio and where I'm living, that is Midsommar Kranz in schooling. And there are very beautiful surprise, uh, nice place around. And I recommend it to, to come to visit. So I think for the first uh, uh, Niketo, uh, news <laughs> is almost all, uh, not is not almost is all. And thank you very much. I hope uh, you have received some good information and that you like what we did. Hope to see you in Milan. And um, thank you very much. And see you soon. Bye.